Good evening, Judge Van Ort, Chair Silverman, Commissioner Sarah, and the members of the Public Service Commission. Uh, thank you for hearing so much of the testimony today. Uh, I was not able to go to, I think, six or seven meetings in my community uh, in order to be here tonight, but I decided I needed to stay. My, my colleague, Walter Mosley, an assembly member, needed to get back to his district after waiting an hour and a half. Um, and uh, we, we, that's, that is our job. Our job is much like yours. We spend our evenings and our days in hearings, listening to our community and working with them. Uh, the, the big thing I want to say thank you to is thank you for selecting a location with air conditioning this year. Um, <laughs> and uh, to, I, I'll read my testimony, I, sorry, my, I will submit my testimony electronically. I have a summary of the uh, testimony that is uh, about one-tenth the length of what will be submitted. And then I'll read uh, Assemblymember Mosley's. I'm Councilmember Ben Kalos. You can connect with me regarding this testimony on social media via Ben Kalos. I'm an attorney, I'm a software developer who got elected in the New York City Council representing the Upper East Side, East Midtown, Roosevelt Island, and Albario. I worked my way through college at SUNY Albany, Lane, Cat 5, Cable, like many of my brothers and sisters at CWA 1101, yeah. who I must thank for being here tonight. We have a rare and overdue opportunity to conduct a comprehensive and thorough analysis of telecommunications industry in the state of New York. And we must do whatever it takes to achieve universal broadband to bridge the digital divide, whether through regulation of providers of mobile phone, fiber, or cable. Each communications medium is increasingly being used as a method to deliver internet access. As we move forward, the PSC must ensure that phone service providers do not abandon our most robust copper wire infrastructure that is singularly capable of providing communications during emergencies and through weeks long blackouts such as those caused by Superstorm Sandy. The PSC must use this opportunity to maintain or improve upon existing telecommunications infrastructure while making universal broadband a reality through universal mobile broadband, universal fiber, and through cable service providers expanding free and affordable broadband. Connectivity has become so essential to the functioning of the 21st century economy that mobile phone adoption has become nearly universal according to your report often in the form of the smartphone with the internet in our pockets. Uh, who could have thought of that in 2005 or 2006, the last time we did this? Meanwhile, Google and other developers have already moved towards a mobile-first approach of the internet. And the concern here is that unlimited data plans are becoming a thing of the past. And rather than focusing exclusively on terrestrial-based broadband provided through cable, fiber, or wired phones, the PSC has an opportunity to leverage its regulation of wireless providers to bridge the digital divide through universal mobile broadband to ensure that wireless companies extend lifeline to ensure that low-income smartphone users can afford unlimited access to the internet. It's of note that uh, Verizon offers lifeline, but only in eight counties versus all of the wow. counties of the state, wow. and uh, they should be. Uh, we can expand the library hotspot system that we have in New York uh, without internet so that people can borrow it for months at a time, and this is something that should be replicated outside of New York City. Uh, expand low cost and limited data plans for all wireless customers, and protect customers from bill shock resulting from phantom data charges. Your apps download things, you pay the bill, even though you may not have known about it. Uh, with regard to universal fiber, on June 18, 2015, the New York City Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications concluded an audit of Verizon's implementation of Fios, the company's state-of-the-art fiber optic network. The audit found that even after seven years, Verizon's fundamentally failed to honor a condition in the franchise agreement to extend Fios by June of 2014 to any household in any of the five boroughs which requested it. Instead, universal coverage is promised. We have anywhere from 45 to 60 percent coverage but many residents, including me, are told that Fios is simply unavailable to them. If Verizon had honored its commitment to New York City, we would have already achieved universal broadband instead of 22% of families and 30% of those below the poverty line. Do not have broadband in their home. This broken promise is unacceptable. It is imperative that PSC assist in the enforcement of the franchise agreement and hold Verizon accountable. Yes, please. Following our com comments of from the then proposed Comcast Time Warner cable merger and the threat that New Yorkers would not have a second bite at Universal Broadband for the Big Apple, the FCC adopted net neutrality guidelines and Chairman Wheeler has called for lifeline eligibility 
for broadband. Now with the charter Time Warner cable merger before your body, we request that you, the proposed merger serve the public interest by providing free and affordable universal broadband by rolling out Connect to Compete program in New York and expanding the program from free and reduced school lunch recipients to those who receive any federal, state, or city benefit, uh, forcing the companies to commit to becoming an eligible telecommunications uh, carrier, an ETC, in order to provide lifeline for phone and eventually broadband services, and eliminating connection fees in urban areas that do not already have connections, such as one person said tonight, citing $30,000 to get an internet connection. Uh, additionally, serving our legacy copper networks. The legacy copper networks that New Yorkers rely on for voice and data services are in poor conditions in many areas of New York City. Citing high maintenance costs, Verizon has pushed to retire these networks, limiting consumer choice. Alarmingly, the massive power outages caused by Superstorm Sandy showed that voice over IP mobile and fiber systems are not resilient as copper during outages. Making matters worse, soon after the storm, Verizon replaced copper cables with fiber instead of repairing them. Verizon must maintain and repair copper networks to ensure New Yorkers have access to reliable phone systems during emergencies. Otherwise, it leaves New Yorkers like myself and so many others to go door to door throughout buildings to make sure that the homebound uh, aren't trapped in their homes without a way to call for help. Um, and I just want to thank you for all that you do. Um, I, as an elected official in government, get to see a little bit from the inside how hard it can be to uh, deal with forcing some of these companies to do things that they never want to do. And I just want to appreciate uh, that uh, you may have gotten a lot of criticism tonight, but hopefully you're able to channel that towards uh, the industry and uh, remind them of what they put you through every time you have to do the public hearings. Yes. And uh, just thank you for your service yes. and hopefully you can be a strong advocate for us. And um, if I may, I'd like to just read Walter Mosley's uh, statement. Um, Assembly Member Walter Mosley, I would like to thank the Public Service Commission for allowing me the opportunity to testify today regarding Verizon Telecommunications, the late process and build out of its high-speed internet service millions of New Yorkers, not only in the upstate regions, but also in the New York City's outer boroughs. My name is Walter Mosley, New York State Assemblyman from the 57th Assembly District. I represent the neighborhoods of Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, Prospect Heights, and parts of Bedford, Stuyvesant, and Crown Heights. I'm here today because the high-speed internet and telephone services are vitally, vital utility services for all New Yorkers, and there has been a substantial interest in subsequent investment by state government in the sum of $500 million to expand access to the digital service. Downloading a high-definition movie takes about seven seconds in Seoul, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Zurich, Bucharest, and Paris, and people pay as little as $30 a month for that connection. In Los Angeles, New York, and Washington, downloading the same movie takes 1.4 minutes for people with the fastest internet available, and they pay $300 a month for the privilege. According to a report published by New, York America, New, New America Foundation's Open Technology Institute, the reason the United States lags behind many countries in both speed and affordability, according to the report, has nothing to do with technology. Instead, it is the economic policy problem, the lack of competition in the broadband industry. Three quarters of American homes have no competitive choice for the essential infrastructure for the 21st century economics and democracy. This puts our country at a competitive, comparative economic disadvantage when it comes to information technology accessibility. Internet speed is not a luxury. To the contrary, it is a vital aspect of our economy, and to ignore it would be tantamount to ignoring our roads and bridges which help transport our goods and services across America. Sadly, we, we do ignore our crumbling infrastructure, but forgive my editorial comment. More competition, better technologies, increased quality of service on wireline networks help to drive down prices. This is Economics 101. The failure of Verizon to tell communications ability to meet its requirement, but I of expanding access to its BIOS internet service is a hindrance not only to service, but an impact and economic growth for upstate communities as well as outer boroughs of New York City. When companies look for environments to set up their businesses, an increasing important aspect of that search is access to fast, reliable internet access. Increasing access to internet is increasing access to online commerce, the ability for hospitals to access and transfer vital medical records, the ability for working families to attend online classes at night and thus achieve college graduate level educations and be economically competitive. Going forward, it is the duty of the Public Service Commission and more over government to make sure our state can maintain economically competitive markets in this 21st century. I hope the findings of these public hearings help to move forward 
to that goal. I'd like to thank you again for this opportunity to testify. Thank you again for staying here so late tonight. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. It's nice to meet you in person. And uh, please tell Assemblyman Mosley that we appreciate him being here. And sorry that he, we were delayed and he had to leave. Okay.